reason why I love coming here to Oakley Lake with fish like this. That's what we like. They're all, as we would call, scaly bangers. So hello and welcome to another video. Yes, I am bloody excited. Look at that behind me. Yes, we're fishing. We are fishing. First of all, let me apologize. I know it's been a long time, but I just couldn't get out to do any day sessions. But now their measurements have been eased we're back out and we're doing it. I've come over to Tony's Water. I'm currently situated on Albury Lake. Um, I've got 48 hours ahead of me and I am really looking forward to this. However, it's not my first trip out. I did have a trip out to Rosemere, which we'll have a little chat about later on. But lots has happened since I last put a video out. God, it's just far too much to throw into an introduction of a video. But for now, let's concentrate on that behind me. Let's get some rods out there we'll touch on tactics what I'm doing it is fishing a little bit tricky at the moment there's been some lads on all week uh, and not many fish has come out it's uh, uh, the, the sun's really chucked a bit of a spanner in the works it's it's a deep old lake this and then fish you know there can be anywhere in them layers but I'm gonna concentrate on the margins uh, that's what my starting point there's a lovely reed bay to my left here that's definitely getting a rod and then we'll have a little look out there and see what else we can find but I'm feeling quite confident we can nick a couple of bites it's just whether or not you know we're gonna have a big hit let's put it that way but we're fishing I'm loving life the biv is up I've just got to get the rods out and then we shall have a proper catch up but welcome back to the channel
so that is it then the rods are out there and I'm feeling rather pleased with myself just the fact that the house is up and I'm sat behind them rods it feels bloody brilliant let me tell you especially after the busy few weeks that I've just had it feels great to be here anyway on the fishing front it's not looking great if I'm being honest I've had a good chat with the owner Tony uh, and a good chat with a few of the guys that have pulled off this morning the lake is fishing rather tricky especially by this lake standards um, I mean you can have some good hits in here if you get if you time it right you know and the fish are on it but at the moment it is fishing tricky there's a few things that are sort of um, that's sort of the reason why it's fishing tricky I think one of them has a lot to do with the fact that it, it did flood this place and it's sort of retracting at the minute uh, and because of that there's a lot of sediment in the water the water's a lot more coloured than usual uh, and the other thing I've noticed there's a bit of frog spawn in the edges and a few tadpoles and Tony did sort of say the sort, similar sort of thing to me so you, you know we are up against it I mean I would be fishing zigs now um, if I hadn't got the information that I've got um, a couple of a couple of the other lads also noticed the uh, tadpoles in that and have been fishing zigs but to no prevail and I think that's got a lot to do with the water being so coloured up I think it's just hard for them fish to uh, pick them out I think you know you need a moving bait um, and you know when you're fishing a zig like that it's very static but that you know that's just my opinion but it's not worked for them lads that's tried it so uh, the one thing that has worked from what i can pick up on is that uh, there's a lot of guys using the boily stick method and, and it's bright pop-ups that tend to be uh, catching the fish at the moment which i'm not surprised about however i'm not putting all my eggs in one basket one basket um, I've gone out there, I've got a bright one on one of them, I've got a yellow on the uh, one that I've put out in the bay uh, and the other two I'm actually fishing the hard on hook bait so I, you know basically I'm fishing a bottom bait and match the hatch bottom bait um, just because you know if everybody's doing the same thing they're all going to have the same results in my opinion but we'll just assess it as we go along I'll chop and change the hook baits uh, and we'll just evaluate things but for now that's my starting point I'm fishing two rods on one spot fairly close in I mentioned before it's quite a deep lake this uh, and I'm fishing just on the drop off not only because you know it's a bit shallower there but because I've, the only fish I have seen is just to the right of me and it was just to the edge of the reeds you know I seen one come up head and shoulder which sort of indicates that they're there and not only that the lads that did pull off sort of told me where the fish had, that was showing where they were showing and things like that so I've got sort of a bit of a gauge as to where the fish are uh, and the swim that I'm in um, there was a young lad in here and he did have a couple of 18 pounders so you know we're not too far away from them even if we're not on top of them sort of thing as it stands at the moment the rods have been out for a couple of hours I've not picked up on any liners but the rod that I'm fishing down into the bay I'm not going to pick up any liners on that because I'm having to fish that bowstring tight because of the way the uh, line comes off in this margin here because we are quite up, um, quite far back you may have noticed that I've set right back on the bank that's just because the water levels up um, and there's a bit of a tree that's sort of hindering me there so I've had to put my rod out a bit and I'm having to fish a tight line because I'm fishing up to the reeds there what I've done is I've sort of cast up to the reeds and put the clip on and you know drawn it back and drawn it back until I'm, I'm actually at the edge of the reeds you can't see where the reeds start and finish really because there's sort of undercut the water level is actually above the reeds so you can't see it you just have to sort of gauge it and then I pulled back pulled back pulled back found the edge of the reeds just had a couple of casts to the left to the right just to make sure that I am well clear of the reeds uh, and not only that just to make sure that I am actually presented there as well it's a nice firm drop it actually feels a bit clay like to me but I'm not picking up any clay on the lead but it does feel like clay um, but the one thing that I am uh, concerned about is the sediment you know I didn't want to be fishing in any of the soft stuff especially with the amount of sediment that's floating around in here at the moment
and I think the key is going to be, you know, sort of working the rods a little bit instead of just sitting on your hands sort of thing, having a cast every sort of hour and a half just to, you know, make sure you're not sitting in any sediment but to freshen the spot up a bit. I've started, you know, by putting a bit of bay out. I've not gone mad, I've put four spawns over the left hand rod uh, and the two that are fishing just on the drop off, only four and a half wraps out, but the two that are fishing there I've put probably six or seven spawns. I wasn't actually counting, but around six or seven spawns, large spawns, um, which isn't a lot of bait, not for the fishing here uh, and when you're fishing two rods over a spot. But that's my starting point. We'll assess, you know, if it, if it turns out that I've put a bit too much in, I can just hold back uh, and when I make the recast, you know, just nick a little bag of pellets on or something like that. But, you know, I feel like I've done the right thing to start off with. I'm I was sort of sli going slightly against the grain on two of the rods because I've got you know I'm fishing bottom baits on two of the rods, and the other one's on a bright one, which is sort of matching what everybody else is doing. But you know if that's what's working, it is hard to ignore that. But I can't ignore it completely. Um, but you know we'll see how we fare. I, if I end up switching the others to bright pop ups, I'll definitely let you know about it. But yes, that's what I'm doing. Uh, I mean, the mix that I'm putting out there, I'm, I'm fishing match the hatch on all of them, although I've got different colours on there. It is a match the hatch. I'm on the Scopex squid, and I have got a little bit of particle in there, not a lot. Um, when I say a little bit, I've got two and a half kgs of boilies in, in the actual bucket, and what I've done is I've pre-soaked them boilies in kettle water, and then left them for 48 hours, drained it off, um, so you know they're very very soft then baits very very soluble uh, and not only that when the carps metabolisms are a bit more slow I mean at this time of year you know you don't want to be going OTT on the bait and when they are eating you know you want to be making sure that they can pass that bait through quite quickly without filling them up so that's the reason why I like to do that with the baits at this time of year uh, no other reason because if anything all you're doing is washing a lot of the goodness out but you know when you put them boilies out there you know <laughs> that's what you do anyway so it, you know I'm not too fussed about doing that but I have rehydrated everything I've put a lot of the uh, Scopex squid food syrup in there I've put well I've probably gone OTT on that to be honest um, but I wanted to put a lot of attraction back in but still get the you know the solubility of the bait as well um, so that's what I've done. I mean the particle, I've got a few larger items, so I've got, I mentioned I've got two and a half kg of boilies and I've probably got about half a kg of particle, which isn't a lot, you know, in comparison, but I just wanted a few other little bits and pieces, some that were a bit of crunch, some that were a bit of visual, just to sort of keep them in the spot or to sort of make it stand out a little bit. So yes, that's what I've done. I mean, rig-wise, I'm on the Take Anywhere rig. It always works for me, that rig. Um, Hook-wise, I'm on the size 6 Pinpoint Claws. Uh, and material, I'm on the Skin Link, uh, the semi-stiff Skin Link. I, I, you know, I've got good spots out there. But the thing that I like about the Skin Link is it's a matte finish. And it'll sort of, you know, it'll sort of blend in with what's out there. So yes, that pretty much brings you up to speed as to what's actually happening out there. I think if we are going to get a bite, I think, you know, sort of late afternoon going into the morning is going to be the better periods. Uh, especially after talking to the guys, that tends to be when the fish have been a little bit more active. And the fish that was caught was in the morning, so fingers crossed on that front. So yes, I'm going to leave it there, stop waffling on, and we'll have a bit of a catch up later on before I turn in.
Well, there you go. Would you look at that? The sun is just about setting behind the trees in the background there. And it looks absolutely prime out there for it. Oh, I am so joyful for being here right now. I just need them fish to be obliging. I'm really surprised I've not seen anything show though. It's usually around this time where you start to see the odd one poke its head out. And as of yet, I've not seen anything else apart from that one in the margin earlier today. So far, I've not picked up any indication that the fish are in the area though, so I don't feel too frustrated. Um, the fish in here definitely swim around in packs. I mean, you can get it where the fish move in, you have two or three bites and then, you know, they're gone again. Um, so, you know, getting that balance of uh, how much bait you put out there is pretty crucial in here. Which is why I started off with what I did, even though it's not fishing great, you still want a bit of bait out there to stop them when they do move across you. And I'm sure they will, I I'm sure they will. I don't feel like we're too far away. They're probably out there, but just not moving about. I mean, if they, if they was moving about a bit, you'd definitely see what the odd ones show, and it is prime for it. I mean, it's been a, pr a typical spring day today, you know, highs of 17 degrees. I mean, it was a hard frost last night. Uh, we've got a hard frost again tonight. Um, tomorrow's going to be a little bit um, not as nice as today, let's put it that way. It's going to be a bit overcast, and the temperature's going to remain a bit cooler. Um, but today has been very typical spring-like conditions. But, you know, it is a change in what it has been for the past previous days. I mean, if anything, though, it's not been that dramatic on the ups and downs with the temperature. But what you really want now, coming into spring, is you want consistent warm days, cold nights, warm days, you know, so it's warming up them upper layers, get them fish moving around. That's what we really look forward to, and that's when the zigs can be deadly. I mean, if you were fishing zigs in here, you definitely have to go on the old adjustables. But so far, there's nothing to really warrant me putting one out. I think if the water wasn't so coloured up, I, I'd definitely persevere with it. But then again, you know, the fish aren't showing neither. You know, you, you have all sorts go through your head, don't you? I mean, if anything, this session has been against me from the get-go. <laughs> Let me tell you, the string of bad luck I had when I was setting off this morning, oh my God. Um, first of all, the car wouldn't start. So I jump-started the car and thought, right, I knew my battery was a bit dodgy anyway. I bought a new battery a few weeks ago and I had to send it back because there's something wrong with it. So I had to put the old one back in. Um, and I knew it was a bit dodgy and because we had a hard frost last night it just wouldn't start this morning so I jump started that and then looked round on the passenger side of the car and I had a flat tyre I was like are you taking the piss I could not believe it it was like everything was against me anyway I pumped the tyre up and it stayed up but the only explanation I've got is I must have a slow puncher because I topped the tyres up yesterday knowing full well that I was going to be doing a journey <laughs> and then woke up to that this morning. Oh my God. And then I've got here, I set up, I went to set the uh, wrapping sticks up and I'm looking around for them thinking, oh my God, they're sat in the garage. Luckily, I found some bank sticks that I can use as wrapping sticks. So all is well, all is well. But hopefully that's my uh, three things of bad luck and it's uh, all good from here on in. I know if anything I'm just buzzing to be here but I desperately want to catch a fish as well. Which is half the reason why I come here to be honest. You know it's always good for a bite here. When anywhere's fishing hard you know it's always good for a bite here. And when, when it's fishing well you know you can have multiple hits on here. It can be one of them waters. And the fish are thriving in here at the moment, they really are. And it not be long before they're all hitting that £30 mark. 
There's a lot of 20s in here now, hell of a lot of 20s, and some good looking fish. I mean, if anything, from the colour of the water, it's making the fish appear a little bit paler than normal, but you get that. There will, it will change, you know, once it, once the uh, once the water starts to clear a bit. Hey, up a liner on the left hander. Come on, come on, the carp gods. Woohoo! Well, that's what we want. Oh, I'm getting excited now. Hopefully, the next time you see me, I will have a fish in my hands with a big fat smile on my face. But for now, I need to get some food on. I am completely starving. And I've got some proper tucker tonight. I've got diced lamb, I've got vegetables, a bit of potato. Oh, I, I, I'm absolutely starving. I'm, I'm salivating just thinking about it. But, I, you know, I wanted to watch the water. I wanted to enjoy that sunset. But now we've enjoyed that. We've had an update. It's tea time for me. So yes, I'm gonna leave it there and we shall have a catch up very soon. Wish me luck. That is what the daddy wants. Yes. Mm. Well, good morning. And would you look at that? What a difference a night makes. And let me tell you, it was a night to remember. Not one for a good reason, but let me tell you what happened. Come midnight, the wind started swinging round. It swung round right into my face. And then it picked up with the rain as well. And we had 38 mile an hour winds last night. And I really had to batten down the hatches. The peak on the bivvy um, flipped up and went inside out. I've had to put guide ropes in that. The pegs was coming out on the back of the bivvy. Oh, it was horrendous. But once I put the guide ropes in, uh, zipped the door down, the pegs remained. Um, so I did get a little bit of sleep, but not much. Um, but I'm pleased to say we've got one in retainer at the moment. I've had him about 10 minutes ago. Um, I'm just sort of waiting for a little gap in the snow before I can do the pictures. Um, but it's come to the bottom bait, so my, you know, my theory's worked. It is a little bit different to what everybody else is doing. And the guy up from me, I've not seen him have a fish. He could have had one, but I doubt it very much. I have seen the odd fish poke its head out this morning though, so a, another bite could be on the cards, but I definitely need to start, uh, you know, freshening the spots up. I'm gonna switch over to the medium spawn and just put a couple out there, just so I'm putting a bit of fresh scent into the area, a bit of fresh bait. I mean, I don't know if it was a pack of fish that moved in, but the fact that I've only had one bit, one bite, and both rods are sitting next to each other, you know, it kind of says a lot, so I don't wanna go in too heavy but I definitely need to freshen them spots up and I'm actually going to switch that bay rod over to a bottom bait as well and um, that's what we've had the bite on so I'm going to stick to it uh, and just keep watching the water I'm really pleased with Nick to bite he's not a big fish but it's better than having no fish so I will get him out and we'll have a look at him in a minute as soon as this uh, snow gives up a little bit it keeps sort of like fizzling out and then it comes back really thick again and you're like oh i'm sort of in and out with the camera at the moment a bit paranoid that i'm gonna ruin the microphone and not only that i'm a bit concerned about the audio i mean it's all right whilst i'm sat here in the bivvy but when you're out there in the elements i mean i have got a good microphone and it hasn't really caused any issues before but laughter last night you know it was horrible it really was horrible and not only that i would i had because the waves was coming right in you'll notice i've dropped the tips down under the water i had these reed stems kept coming over my rods and i'm my lambs are beeping every five seconds i was in there trying to clear them off and one one of the waves went over my boot as well and i got wet socks I tell you it's just one of them sessions it's just we've got to get a decent one just for the effort we've put in that's what i'm trying to say but i'm happy despite everything that's gone on i'm happy i'm still here i'm fishing and we're doing it let's see if we can make something else happen so anyway i'm waffling let's get this fish out and i shall see you on the mat
Well, at last it's stopped snowing and we've got the fish out. And what he lacks in size, he makes up for in good looks. He's a little pearler and a little bit bigger than I first thought because he's just gone 12 pound one. Uh, I thought I sort of estimated him about nine pound, but he's a little dumpy thing. And there he is, look. Not breaking any records here but it certainly made me happy this morning uh, after a night, that is a night I am not gonna forget in a hurry. Quickly spin him round and then I'm gonna slip him straight back and get them spots working. Oh yeah, that's his better side. Look at the scale pattern on him. He's gonna grow up to be a proper minter he is. Not that he isn't already, but we do like him when they're big, fat and scaly, don't we? Well, I certainly do anyway, but he's a credit to this lake. Usually at the moment, they look rather pale, but he's got a bit of colour to him. Um, he must be one of the new ones that Tony's put in. That's uh, the, the only thing I can sort of uh, conjure up at the moment as an explanation why he looks so nice, because he does look mint. Anyway, I'm waffling. Let's slip him back, get them spots working, and try to make another bite happen. Well, it hasn't been too long since I last spoke to you and the rod was away again. I didn't even get a chance to redo the rods or put any more bait in and the bay rod went. So this one comes to a yellow scope eight squid. So I'm in a bit of a quandary what to do now. I think I'm gonna leave things as they are. I've already fresh the, refreshed the spots up while the fish was in the net. I thought it, it's important to get a bit of bait out there, but wait till you see this one. They're getting bigger and it's not quite 20. He's just gone 18 and a half pound, but I'm chuffed to bits with him. Let's have a look. Oh, and there we go, look. It was snowing 20 minutes ago, and now the sun's out. You just can't write it, can you? But I'm not bothered. As long as these fish keep coming along, I'm a happy boy and another credit to this lake. Scale perfect, this one. He's gonna grow into a minter as well. Oh, and this is the reason why I love coming here to Aubrey Lake, for fish like this. There's lots of fish in here like this and you just never know which one's gonna come next. There's a few small ones, but they're getting bigger by the day. It's not going to be long until they're all pushing 30 pound. 
There's a hell of a lot of 20s in here. Uh, and let's hope we get amongst a couple of them. Or at least one of them. That would be nice. But for now, let's slip this fella back and see if we can't make something else happen. Mwah! Well, good afternoon and we are approaching tea time now. Not a lot to report on for today, apart from the wind is still blowing my head off. I mean, the sun's been quite intermittent and at the moment the sun's out, but when it is out, you know, you can feel the difference, but as soon as it pokes behind them clouds again, boy, God, is it cold being out in that wind. So I do hope the weatherman's right and it does drop off tonight because if anything I could do with a bit of a grandad nap I'm starting to feel it a bit um, but I've kept my foot on the gas today I've been trickling a bit of bait every sort of hour or so just a couple of spawns I mean I don't think the fish are here at the moment but I do think they're going to turn up at some point again I mean if anything I think there's a, a few more fish up the other end of the lake at the moment the odd fish that I have seen show it's all been up that end but there is a guy up the top end uh, and he'd been down to see me this morning and he's struggling, he hasn't had a bite yet uh, and I think the only difference between what I'm doing and what he's doing is he's fishing out a lot longer than me he was fishing out at 14 wraps out sort of out into open water uh, and obviously I'm fishing a lot closer and I'm, I'm sort of uh, targeting the shallow areas of the lake especially down in that bay I'm sort of fishing in around about 10 foot of water down there uh, and as it drops off at the bottom here I'm fishing in about 14 to 15 foot of water uh, and I think that's made all the difference. I mean not only that in a lake like this where the main body is sort of between 25 and in 40 foot in places there is a deep hole out there that goes down to 44 um, so you know in a big lake like this with not a lot of features in it the margin does become the biggest feature uh, and then fish just get used to patrolling it you know and they come right into the reeds and that yeah, on a warm day you can watch, sit and watch them in the reeds all day long uh, I mean 
uh, from drone footage that I've seen in the past as well you know you can see them going round in like packs of 20 and 30 fish at a time and this is why I've baited the way I have even though it's not really fishing great I think you've still got to put that little bit of bait in otherwise you just don't tempt to bite or if you get a bite you're, you're not going to get another one I mean them two fish this morning they was in quite quick succession of each other you know and I don't think if I'd have put the bait in I'd have I'd, you know I'd have picked up two bites I think it had just been the one bite and that was it done so you know that's why I've been trickling a bit extra in today just so you know it's keeping the spot fresh uh, and when it's like this you know pumping the medium spam out there when it's like fishing the Baltic Sea it's not really going to hit your chances especially in the deep water you know if anything these fish are quite uh, they're not really rig shy so to speak of I suppose that's not the, the phrase I'm looking for. They're not really scared of the splash, that's what I'm trying to make out. Um, it, it's a bit of a different story over on Heron Lake, uh, Tony's Other Water, which is just across the field. That's fishing really hard at the moment as well. All the lads on there have blanked, but you know, the fish have become very wary of the lines in that water over there, and they're very aware of the uh, you know people casting in and out it's totally different to when i did them couple of videos on there let's put it that way so yeah it's uh, it's surprising just how quickly fish you know fish habits can change and and how aware they are of, of surroundings and other anglers you know they're not daft i know where uh, a lot of people don't credit them enough but for me you know i know i well i try to notice everything i can really and in here they're not scared of the spawn I mean there's a lot of lads sort of boily fishing and you know that works for them if anything sort of every method does work in here from what I've noticed um, but I don't know of anybody using bottom baits I, I even said to Tony because um, Tony's been around to see me this morning he even said to Tony you know I've had one on the bottom bait and one on the pop up and he says oh bottom bait so I don't think anybody's tried that so, you know, a method behind the madness, that's what I say. And sometimes just them little things make a big difference. I mean, it might not be that. It might just have been the fact that I'm waiting for the fish to turn up and we've had a bite on both just because that's what's out there. But we shall see. We'll gauge it and we shall see. And I think it's probably worth mentioning that I haven't mentioned it already, but yes, I am in Nash clothing. Yes, a lot has happened since the last time I put a video out. I mean, to cut a long story short, I was approached by Horncastle Angling Centre and they asked me to become a consultant for them uh, and cover some of their media stuff, do some review videos and help build the YouTube channel up and that kind of thing. Uh, and then since then, things have just escalated. I mean, they've opened up another shop uh, over in Retford, which is the town where I live. Um, and the reason why they've opened the shop there is because they asked me if I'd be the manager for that shop, and I accepted. So I've took on that role, and I've took on the media role as well. So I'm sort of a store manager stroke media manager now for One Stop Fishing Tackle and Horncastle Angling Centre. Well, not Horncastle Angling Centre, but I still cover their media forum and I still do you know review type videos and that you know in fact the last time I was out that's what I was doing I was doing a review on the Nash Bushwhacker poll um, but you know I was approached by Nash after that and the rest is history you know to get an offer from Nash I was just absolutely blown away so yes I'm now a consultant for Nash I absolutely chuffed to bits with that I really am I mean not that anything was wrong with Shimano or anything like that it was still a really good bait but you know when an offer like that is presented on your lap it's very hard to say no I didn't feel like I was ever going to progress with Shimano you know I was sort of sat in that same role doing the same thing over and over and I felt like I put quite a bit of effort in you know uh, and it was going unnoticed but hey ho that's the way it is uh, and this is where I am now I don't want to waffle on about uh, that type of thing because that isn't what I like my vlogs to be about you know it's about the fishing it's about catching fish it's about my passion for catching the fish and that's why we call it passion for big carp so yes back to the session then let's see if we can winkle out a 20 that's the target before we go home 
I think it's achievable, you know. Even though it's fishing tricky, I do think it's achievable. And I'm gonna keep my foot on the grass, on the, on the grass, keep my foot on the gas and see if we can't make it happen. We've got plenty of time left yet. Um, gonna sort of pack up around dinner time tomorrow. So there's plenty of time left yet. I'm getting through the bait now though. Um, as I mentioned, I started off with two and a half kg boilies, about half a kilo particle, and I've put all that out there now. I've got none left, um, but I have got some more boilies soaking, so you know, I will well top up with some boilies. I've just missed the particle out. But I have made plenty of little sticks up. I'm sort of calling them the syrup sticks because of the mixture that it is, a bit like a biscuit mix. It's real sticky you know sort of mix and it, it, it you know it just basically stays next to the hook when you put it out there there is a bit of an undertow and as i mentioned the sediment that's out there it just gives me that little bit of extra confidence next to the hook bay so yes if nothing else happens this evening i think the next time you see me will be in the morning but hopefully it's not that long until you see me and it'll be a bit later on with the fish but fingers crossed wish me luck i choose to think positively no matter what's going on around me i have a great life and all will continue to have a great life Well, good morning, and I am just setting the scene for what's happened this morning. But as you look out there now, you'll notice the wind still blowing across. It did die off a bit last night, but it's picked back up again this morning, and it feels Baltic, it really does. It was a hard frost this morning, uh, and I'm sitting here now with my hands in my pockets next to my body because I can't feel my fingertips. I've not long uh, dealt with that last fish. As you can see, the victory flags are up. We've had two fish this morning off the same rod as well. But I'll cast it back to uh, yesterday when I last spoke to you. I had my tea, I got in a sleeping bag. Uh, and at this point, I was thinking to myself, I should have had a, a, a couple of liners the night before. By that point, I'd already had a couple of liners, you know, indicating that the fish was on the way down. Um, so, you know, I was sort of laid there questioning, you know, have I put too much bait in? But it turns out I haven't. It's just a, a, a matter of waiting for the fish to turn up. Um, so, yes, uh, good sleep up until about half past midnight. And then I awoke to a blistering run on the right hand rod. It was absolutely stripping line off. I couldn't get my boots on quick enough and get the door open. Uh, gets out there only to find out it's a duck. I couldn't believe it. A bloody duck had picked up my line. So I sorted him out. Had a rig ready to go. Had another stick ready to go. I was prepared. Um, got it back out there. Straight back into the sleeping bag. And then I was awoke this morning with a little twitchy take on the uh, bay rod again, the left hand rod. Little twitchy take, lifted into it. Uh, it felt like a small fish. I knew it was a small fish from the get go, but it was just one of them, you know, where you just get out your pit and it is absolutely bone chilling out there. The rod was shaking from me, freezing. It really was a, a bit of a funny situation to be in. If anybody could have seen me, oh dear, they'd have been laughing. And then when I seen the sides of the fish when it went in the net, I thought, oh my God, I've just got out my pit for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I shouldn't, I shouldn't curse, but you know, that's what I was thinking. Anyway, I slipped him in the net, got the rod back out there, I had everything ready to go, stick was ready to go, rig was ready to go, straight back out on the spot. I come back into the bivvy thinking I'm having a cup of tea before I saw that fish out, put the kettle on and it was away again. I doubt the PVA even had chance to melt, it was that quick. Um, but this time it was a totally different fight, really did give a good account of himself. 
Um, I mean, I wish I'd have had the camera ready to get it on on camera, really, but it was one of them, you know, when you've just woke up out of your pit and then, you know, you put the rod back out there, think you're going to sort yourself out, and then it goes again. It was one of them. Um, so, you know, that's the story. That's what's happened. The fish did really give a good account of himself. Probably 10 minutes I had him on for. Uh, and I've just slipped him in the net now. Um, just about to put the kettle on, but I thought I'd get the camera out first because I don't want to keep him in there too long. I'm just going to do a bit of video of the small one. I'm not going to bother lifting him up and doing all the pictures and that malarkey with him, but we'll get a bit of video slipping him back, and then I shall see you on the mat when we're sorting the other one out. But on the uh, other side of things, like I forgot to mention, that's three bikes on the uh, washed out yellow scope X now. So, you know, my theory with the bottom bait, you know, is it is it a thing? I don't think it is. I think anything will catch in here, I really do. I think it's just waiting for them fish when they turn up. But as it turns out, I ain't had a bite off the four and a half wrap spot this morning. So, could there be another bite on the cards? Who knows, only time will tell. But they're out there. I've got enough bait out there over the middle too. Uh, and the bay rod, I haven't put any more bait out. I'm a bit reluctant to do that because I think it spooks them out the area. If I was gonna put anything out now, I think I'd just get the throwing stick out. But I'm not, I'm just gonna sit on my hands. I put enough out yesterday. Hopefully we can nick another bite before we go. But until then, let's get this fish sorted out. Well, here we go then. Just slipped the little one back and here's the better of the brace this morning. 19 pound two, this one's just gone. Still not quite that magical 20, but we've got a couple of hours left and we're still trying. I hope you can hear me with this wind because it seems to be picking up and picking up. It's blowing an absolute hooligan, but I'm not bothered. My hands are freezing, but I bloody don't care. I quickly spin him round and there's the other side in this morning sunshine lovely jubbly that's what we like anyway let's slip him back onto the next one or at least we can try anyway Well, if it sounds like I'm shouting, it's because I am. I'm a bit bothered about the audio. It is absolutely hacking in right now. And somehow I've got to pack that bivy down. But we've landed another fish, one for the road, as they say. Um, he's not a big one, he's just gone 13 pound four. So I am chuffed to bits. And there he is, look. Beautiful scale patterns on this one, as they all are in here. They're all, as we would call, scaly bangers. 
Oh yes. Mwah. And there's the other side, look. Beautiful fish. I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm gonna slip this straight back and we shall have a little catch up in the bivvy before I head home. But it's bye from him for now. Well that is it then, this session is just about come to an end. I've had to retreat to the bivvy for obvious reasons. It has felt like an endurance test, let me tell you. Especially the wind more than anything, it is just absolutely hacking in. But it's been worth it, you know, I've thoroughly enjoyed it despite the conditions. You know, they can throw anything at me, but I was just pleased to get a few bites under my belt. You can always count on Albury Lake for a few bites when anywhere's fishing hard. It really is a great little water, this. Uh, Tony has done an absolutely fantastic job with this, with this fishery, and it is flourishing, you know. The fish are coming on. I absolutely love it here. But anyway, I am waffling on. I'm going to get the house down now. Hold on for dear life. Uh, until next time, you know, this is me signing off. I am next out at the Elites down in Cottington on the 16th of April. That's the next time I'm out fishing. So look forward to that one. The videos, however, it's service as usual now. Thanks to Boris letting us back out. I know the frustrations we've all had, but it's a green light from now on and hopefully we've kicked this virus in the ass. Hopefully this vaccination does its job. So yes, it's goodbye from me and I'll see you on the next one.